I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm diving back into the city of Krat, as I'd like to talk about my favorite enemies found throughout Lies of P. To clarify, I'm focusing on any and every non-boss enemy for this list. Is there no boss health bar? Then they're valid. Now, this was a tough video to research, as on top of rewatching my old footage from last year's playthrough, there just isn't much information on the Lies of P enemy roster on either of the main wikis. Seriously, Souls YouTubers, we need to come together to create a better wiki than Fextra Life. As such, most of these enemy names will probably be non canon, so take them with a grain of salt. Let's get to it. My top 10 Lies of P enemies ranked. Which were your favorites? Let me know down below, and if you're interested in other Lies of P videos, I've got a little playlist on the channel too. Coming in 10th place, we have the dual shield puppet, found first at Venini Works, as well as in the rafters of the Grand Exhibition. You'll find that for the most part, my list today comprises of some of the more exciting encounters strewn throughout the levels. And none of these enemies have the same initial buildup as this puppet. Found hanging in a metallic box near the start of the Venini Ironworks, as you approach, it drops, shattering the floor, granting you passage forwards, but also forcing you to get closer to said box. Then, as you land in its arena, it bursts free from its confines, two large shields ready to block your attacks and make you suffer in the early game. Pro tip, just run past this guy, grab the stargazer in the next room, and then try to fight it. Because for as much as I love the design of this enemy and the build-up, the actual fight itself leaves a lot to be desired. The issue I have is that I couldn't figure out the parry timings to block the shields, and it was hard to find proper windows in which to get those hits in and break its posture. Ironically, it was like punching a wall, which was fine in the first encounter with an arena large enough to handle the puppet, but the one placed on the rafters in the Grand Exhibition is sadistic, and had me using my elemental damage and my fable arts to make a worthwhile dent. Their designs are imposing, and I like the way they're used in both environments, one as a mini-boss, the other as this ever-encroaching wall you have to bypass. Perhaps it's because these aren't truly puppets like the rest of the enemies, but more mechanical marvels. They stand out for their industrial nature and would fit right at home in Near Automata. Maybe that's why I'm drawn to them so much? I just wish I knew how to break their guard easier and make the fights more entertaining. If you guys know, let me know down below. Taking the number 9 spot, we have the creepiest of the basic regular enemies in the game, the Baby Puppets. Found at Rosa Isabel Street, these spooky little children feel like they were designed for a horror game, not a Souls-like. When you first discover them, you run into a single baby in the middle of the room, and when approached, it does a full 180 degree head turn before swarms of the fuckers come crawling out of the woodworks. An army that waddles towards you, attempting to smack you with their tiny little hands, it's like being on Twitter. While not tough to kill, they're the perfect ambush enemies, appearing towards the end of the level in another house, still managing to make me jump. Why I like them so much is less to do with their mechanics and more to do with their lore. After all, baby puppets raise so many questions. Why do they exist? What is their purpose or function? Did they look after other kids for their parents? Were they given to people who couldn't have children or didn't want the burden of another mouth to feed? They're a stark reminder that even before the puppet frenzy, Krat was going down a path of overconsumption and the need to puppet every concept they could find. This wasn't a good city, even at the best of times, and you know what? I'm never having kids. Next up at number 8, we have the first of two human enemies appearing on today's list, the Electric Cane Alchemists found in Upper Archi Abbey. These are without a doubt meant to be the toughest regular enemies in the game. They share a moveset with the regular Cane Alchemists found earlier, except their attacks are bolstered by electricity, and they have a health bar larger than some of the game's earlier bosses. 
I really like the design of the human alchemists in this game. They're barely human, faces deformed, clad in cool steampunk Victorian garb. Very similar in both vibe and moveset to the church guardians from Bloodborne, but with a more Lies of P-centric design, and I'm not mad. Towards the end of the game, you're able to shred through most enemies with the right consumables and weapon combinations, so having an enemy that can at least put up a considerable fight is a nice challenge. Even if they do feel a bit too damage spongy for my liking on New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus, you've got to strike that balance after all. My only issue comes from them always being flanked by other, more annoying enemies that split your focus too much. This enemy didn't need an army, they could fuck me up on their own. Plus, their ranged electric attacks can make them feel overwhelming to escape from, which for me makes them just a little less fun to fight over their regular counterparts. I do like the touch that you can stun the Electric Cane Alchemists if you get behind them, as you can hit the Ergo Supply strapped to their back, allowing for a free visceral attack. I think more enemies in Souls and Souls-like games need dynamic weaknesses that players can target. I think it'd go a long way if FromSoft were able to incorporate that into their games. Moving on to number 7, we have the Opera Spider Puppets from the Estella Opera House. Of all the enemies on this list today, these gals have a unique set of mechanics that sets them apart completely from the rest. Firstly, and perhaps most dangerously, getting too close can cause them to let loose, I said let loose, a serenade of disruption, when they sing their notes of course. It makes the disruption status trigger, and if it fills to the top, your character instantly dies. Now normally, I hate status effects that do this. Curse and Death Blight from the Souls games drive me nuts, but here it's fairly easy to avoid, as you'll only be at risk if you're extremely close to the enemy. Just time your attacks and you'll be fine. It's the other mechanic where the danger lurks. There's another enemy type here, these maid puppets in the Opera House, who you'll often find being buffed by the spider puppets. It's showcased with the puppet on a string motif that is so simple yet so genius. So you can either fight the maids, but they'll take less damage and stagger less often, or you can go straight for the opera spider puppet controlling them, killing the big honcho to make the minions easier to take out. It's a fun dynamic and makes both enemy types far more memorable as a result. Rounding out the bottom half of our list, at number 6, we've got the first of two carcass enemies on today's list, the giant carcass scorpions, found in the return to Krat Central Station and throughout the lower half of Archi Abbey. Carcass enemies are effectively zombies, creatures created from the alchemists' experiments and the secondary threat facing the city of Krat. They very much remind me of the Plagas from Resident Evil 4, giving Resident Evil monster mutation vibes at every single turn. The giant carcass scorpions are perhaps the most dangerous of the carcass monster designs, being these giant four-legged beasts able to whip you with their claws, a tail, their bites. Now, admittedly, they're not hard to fight, fire damage will cut through them like a hot knife through butter, and if you've got a remotely strong damage-dealing weapon, they'll be out like a light in mere moments but they look so cool! The ones at Archi Abbey that you have to lead away lest you be blasted by the nearby cannons require a lot of strategy and planning to take on, and they don't respawn which is a blessing, as once you've taken one out, you can breathe a sigh of relief knowing you've made actual tangible progress. Obviously, there's an element of decay in the moveset you have to watch out for, but honestly, by the end game, decay isn't even that bad of a hindrance. The poison effect is easy to heal through, and a quick top up with the grinder wheel will have your weapon good as new. The carcass enemies definitely feel more like style over substance when it comes to their movesets, but given how complicated other enemies can be, I actually appreciate the ease they bring, and that's why I think I enjoy them so much. Oh my god, it's March already? And we're getting closer to my goal of 20,000 subscribers by the summer of 2024! Insert obligatory YouTuber, look at how many of you aren't subscribed comment here. If by the end of the video you enjoy what you watch, consider parrying that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my future videos. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Next up, a quicker entry than the rest, we have number 5. 
the regular Kane alchemists. Yeah, to everyone's surprise, I actually prefer the more vanilla variant of these human enemies over the electric variants. Though, because of their extremely similar movesets, there's not actually much I can talk about without retreading old ground. You'll find the Kane alchemists in the ruined streets of Central Krat, in the building you have to press through before the Watcher of Illusions fight, and these are your first human enemies in the game. They have the same Kane combos as the Electric variant, but none of the ranged attacks that come with it, which should make them more boring by comparison, but remember, the regular variants are introduced into the game first, which makes them feel more original. With their wicked canes and their ergo weak points, you can shatter them for an easy stagger, and upon first introduction, I feel they feel intimidating and unique. As said in the earlier entry, their designs are top-notch, these steampunk Victorian Italians, faces warped by their experiments with Ergo, somehow feeling more monstrous than some of the puppets you've been fighting prior. Your first real human enemies don't really feel human at all, and I think that's the best part about them. Coming in at number 4, we have the Malambar Carcass. I call it this because it's the first time you fight this variant in the game, but it's one of the few encounters that sticks out to me as particularly memorable and horrifying. The Malam District is a brutal location of winding, close-knit streets, filled to the brim with enemies trying to rip you apart. Tons of carcass creatures try to take you on along the way, and yet none are more haunting than the final monstrosity standing between you and this area's boss fight. The Malam Bar Carcass is this walking pound of flesh, ripped straight out of the Binding of Isaac or Resident Evil, its body split open down the middle, its arms sharpen blades that it can stretch out to stab you from a distance. When I see this enemy, I forget that I'm playing Lies of P and my horror game instincts kick in. It's the last creature between you and the shortcut back to the Stargazer, so whether you fight it or run past it, you've gotta make a quick choice. I was convinced it was a non-respawning enemy after my first fight, but ugh, I was so wrong when I came back to the bar after sitting at the checkpoint and seeing it respawn. Its attacks are so jagged and disturbing, and that tongue, dear lord that tongue. If this guy catches you on top of the stairs like my first encounter, unless you can burst damage him to death, there is a high chance you die, because at melee range, this creature is deadly. You've got to be cautious, time your dodges, light that weapon on fire, and burn this creature to the ground. And then you fight these guys again throughout the game, most memorably for me, in the depths of Lorenzini Arcade, where bad things happen. But it's just got that design that sticks with me, and deserves to be remembered. It comes as no surprise that my top three Lies of P enemies are all puppets because Lies of P is at its strongest when utilizing the puppet designs that marketed the game from the very beginning, and nowhere is this more apparent than the puppet policeman. There are two found in the game, both extremely early on in your playthrough. The first is in Krat Central Station and is your first true test of skill, while the second is found towards the end of Elysian Boulevard, in the square where you talk to the NPC who wants her baby. Our initial encounter is more of a tutorial, designed to teach us how to use Fable Arts, as well as putting all the knowledge we've been learning against the lesser enemies here to use. And it's not a particularly difficult fight, keep your aggression up, don't let the policeman shoulder bash you, and avoid the baton. The second encounter is where the puppet policeman decides he wants to play, as most of his attacks become reefed in red, forcing you to perfect parry, or dodge back and pray you've got the space. The aggression is turned up to 11, forcing you to play defensively while also balancing that aggression, something that will be further taught by the upcoming bosses. I just appreciate that the policeman is harder in his second appearance, as the developers decide to turn off the training wheels and just let you attempt to fight the guy. Plus, you can run past him to unlock shortcuts if needed, and he drops his weapon upon his defeat, which makes him worth battling. Sure, there are other mini-bosses later that have a similar vibe, like the puppets found outside the Grand Exhibition Gardens, which technically could be more fun in a difficulty sense, but I'm just a stickler for the classics, especially those that taught me a lesson or two. Taking today's silver medal, we have the Jester Puppet found in the depths of the Lorenzini Arcade, as well as Upper Archie Abbey. 
Now, in my area ranking when the game came out, I had a few things to say about these jesters. After all, both of them are some of the most intimidating enemies in the game to fight. The first appearance in the basement of the arcade is the most memorable, as in order to progress, you have to defeat this mini-boss. The room is dark, there are carcass creatures locked behind gates, and as you approach a nearby wine rack, the jester bursts forth. Of all the enemies in Lies of P, the Jester is the most aggressive. What with its shockingly high mobility, its extremely fast swings of its nailed clubs, and its delayed attacks. After a short period, the carcass enemies will break out of confinement, and that is your key. Because enemies of different typings will attack each other. You've got to use the carcasses to help whittle down the Jester's health so you can ultimately win this fight. The Jester's most dangerous attack is definitely its wind-up, it'll hop in place ready to strike you down, but it's never clear when the hop will turn into an attack versus just another hop. It's a seriously difficult roadblock, one that I felt was unfair until I realized the other enemies were there for a reason. So with that added knowledge, I respect the encounter a lot more. But the one at Adiki Abbey was just cruel in its placement. It comes running down the stairway towards you, in the direction you need to go, and you've likely killed the other enemies before triggering it, meaning there are no distractions around, so you either have to run past the Jester and pray, or upon your inevitable death, don't kill the enemies prior and lead them to the Jester to watch the fireworks. Sometimes it's fun to sit back and let the rest of Kratz's menagerie take the lead. Just be careful you don't trigger that break status or you won't be able to heal. It's easily one of the most infamous enemies in the game, but it isn't my number one encounter because... Who else was gonna top a Lies of P enemy ranking but the one mini-boss enemy designed around the original mythos? Whether it's towards the end of the Barren Swamp or up at Adachi Abbey as you're about to climb a ladder, nothing can save you from the horrors of the Pinocchio Puppet. This mechanical horror is designed to look just like the Pinocchio character from all the stories, though with how he bounces and rolls around, it's more of a monkey puppet than anything else. He's got a tanky HP pool that forces you to play carefully yet aggressively if you want to take him down. But you've got to be careful because on top of the hops, the Pinocchio Puppet has some brutal grab attacks. It can be hard to avoid them, as the delay on the attack means you won't know when it's coming in for the kill, which could be seen as bad game design, but the first time you fight this guy is right after unlocking a Stargazer shortcut, so you don't really lose anything by getting duped. I've learned worse delayed attack timings in Elden Ring and Dark Souls 3. His other combos involve fist fighting and leaping around, he hits harder than you'd think, and can decimate a health bar in just a few moments, but also feels like one of the few fights in the game where you and the enemy are on equal footing. For all the damage he can deal, you can deal it right back, and I always find myself at the edge of my resources fighting him, which I like for a non-respawning mini-boss. His appearance in Archi Abbey is right after our previous entry, the Jester, appearing in a cell with a ladder you have to climb, and he's entirely skippable if you really don't want to deal with it. But he's worth fighting because the smaller arena means less room for him to move, whereas you've got enough space to dodge back, get off those fable arts, and show how much you've grown. Also worth noting this thing as the most horrifying children's laughter coming out of his mouth as you fight. Those recordings once meant to make people happy, instead being a source of genuine horror. It's the most memorable pair of ambushes in the game, and the design is naturally one we're all drawn to because of the source material. A worthy number one enemy for Lies of P. And that's my ranking. Which Lies of P enemies did you enjoy fighting the most? I'm sure I missed quite a few. I think we're all going to have very different lists because there are just so many different enemy types in the game. And we'll see how this and my other Lies of P videos age once the DLC eventually drops. So be sure to parry that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my future content. It's a lovely place to be here around my channel. My socials are on screen now, feel free to follow where you feel comfortable. I recommend my Twitter, my Blue Sky, or my Discord. I'm not terribly active in any of them, to be fair, but they are good ways of keeping up with my work. A massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. You guys are amazing for supporting me for another month. $4.99 is all it takes, and you get early access to my Tuesday videos, as well as your name in the description and at the end of my videos. 
and my patrons over on Patreon. I haven't forgotten about you. You're amazing as well. Thank you for another month of support. I will be phasing out of Patreon soon, but for the time being, thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time for another video. Adios.